We all know that breakers play a critical role in protecting our homes from electrical issues, but how do they work exactly? And not only that, is there anything that these things miss in terms of safety and protection? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about that and more. First, a little bit of a backstory. Now, I've been seeing quite a few comments on my electrical videos lately about breakers and questions and comments about how they work and what protection they provide. So I wanted to clarify exactly what breakers do, what they protect against, and what other things they don't cover. So I have a couple other videos that I put together about GFCI and AFCI because those are more of an advanced topic. We'll touch on those briefly here, but in this video, we're gonna talk about the core of what a breaker does. So that way we can understand what protection it provides and what protection it lacks. But first, in order for us to make sense of everything, we need to take one more step back and talk a little bit about where everything started, and that's fuses. So a fuse is the simplest way to protect a circuit, and it basically provides the same level of protection as a breaker. So like a breaker, they're designed to protect electrical circuits from overloads and from electrical shorts. As an example, an overloaded circuit can happen if you have too many devices plugged into the same circuit that when everything's turned on, they draw too much power. Or if you're using an appliance that requires more power than the circuit is designed to handle, that can cause an overload situation as well. The way a fuse works is by allowing only a certain amount of electrical current to pass through it and the circuit. It does this by using a metal wire called a filament inside the fuse that's designed to handle a certain amount of electricity. If too much current or electricity comes through, the filament melts. That melted filament breaks the circuit and stops the flow of electricity. Now they don't just make one size of fuse or one size of breaker. Both fuses and breakers can have different amounts of electricity that's allowed to pass through them. And they can be rated for things like 15 amps or 20 amps. And in the case of the fuse, it's all determined by the size of the filament inside. So basically what happens is if there's too much electricity flowing through the filament, there will be more heat than that filament can handle. And the extra heat will cause the filament inside of the fuse to melt. The melted filament disconnects the circuit and protects the wiring that's in the wall from any potential damage, including melting or even potentially causing a fire. Now, fuses work really well to protect circuits, but they have one big flaw, and that is once a fuse has done its job and has blown from too much electrical current, it has to be replaced in order for the circuit to work again. Breakers solve that problem because they can work over and over again without being replaced. You simply have to reset them if there's an overload. And instead of blowing a fuse, you trip a breaker. So those two terms are very descriptive of what's happening inside of these devices. So with a breaker, the filament is replaced with a mechanism that can be reset if it has to protect the circuit. Now there are different ways that a breaker can function, but the most common is either a bimetallic strip that bends as it gets too hot, which in turn disconnects the circuit, or an electromagnet that pulls the connection apart, which disconnects the circuit as well. It's also important to point out here that the number of amps that the breaker is rated for depends mainly on the wiring that's installed. So you can't just simply replace a breaker with one that's rated for more amps than what's already in place. Now, while breakers provide the bulk of the protection needed for electrical installations in a home or a building, they don't protect against all the problems. There's some other situations that need extra protection that breakers can miss. Remember, the reason why a standard breaker works is because of too much current being drawn through the circuit, and that causes heat to build up and cut off the power. But there are a couple of other dangerous situations that can happen, which may not draw enough power for a breaker to kick in. The first situation is called a ground fault. To protect against this situation, you need a GFCI or a ground fault circuit interrupter. This breaker or receptacle is designed to detect ground faults and interrupt the flow of electricity before a dangerous shock can occur. They work differently than a breaker because they monitor the amount of current flowing between the hot and the neutral terminals. A minor variance in the current between these two terminals will cause a GFCI to trip quickly. And because of that, GFCIs are required in areas with a high risk of shock, such as bathrooms, kitchens, and outdoor areas to protect people from getting electrocuted. The other situation is called an arc fault. This is when electricity is jumping a gap through the air and creating an arc. So you can think of this as if you've ever seen a stun gun and you see the blue arc of electricity jumping between the two terminals, that will give you a good idea and a good picture of what can be happening if an arc fault happens. Now to protect against this problem, you need to use something called an AFCI or an arc fault circuit interrupter. Arc faults can be caused by damaged wiring or other electrical issues, and they can create a fire hazard, even when the circuit is drawing only a small amount of power. So AFCIs detect these faults by looking for abnormal behavior in the way the electricity is being used. 
If an AFCI sees something it thinks isn't normal, it's going to trip and shut off the power before a fire can start. Now I can go into a lot more detail about GFCI and AFCI, but I've already put together a couple more videos on those two topics, so you can go and check those out here now. And I just wanna say thanks for watching this video. Hopefully this helped clarify the purpose of breakers, and I will see you in the next video.